am Martha Higdon, and today I'm going to show you the Catching Rays Ruler by Handy Quilter. I'm working on my Handy Quilter Forte today, and I have a quilt that I'm using this ruler for. Um, it's Catching Rays, and it's going to go all the way around. I always like to keep the package, and I like to keep my ruler inside the package, but I also like to keep the ideas that are on the back of the package. What you can see here is this one here is the one we're going to do. You can notice that in the picture that there is a, um, a lot of excess right there in the center. So what we're gonna do is gonna make sure that's gonna be a thread buildup. So I already have Omni 40 weight loaded. So if I was to do it again, I would probably pick a so fine 40 or 50 weight thread instead of a 40 weight thread. But just take that in consideration that there's gonna be some thread buildup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Catching Rays ruler on this quilt here, it looks like a spider web. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to do the catching rays. The one thing I like about the catching rays, you stay in one location and it goes all the way around the ruler without ever repositioning. Some things you have to have before you can do rulers. I have my ruler base on. I have my sure foot. It's got a higher shank on and I have a ruler that's at least a quarter inch thick. So on this one here, I'm gonna start in the center. So I'm gonna do needle down, needle up. I'm gonna pull my bobbin thread to the top. I am in free motion. So I'm gonna do a few locking stitches just to get it started in place. And then I'm gonna do my first one straight up. So I apply pressure to the ruler down and I push play and I go up and I stop. Notice I stop with the needle in the down position. I then cut away my threads because I got to go back to the same hole, line it back up, and come straight back down. Okay. You're going to try your best to stay on that, that straight line. So now what I'm going to do, once I've made my first one, I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to line up that line with the last one that I just quilted, leaving the needle in the down position, positioning my hand, and back out and back in. So you're gonna have some thread build up. So then I'm gonna just keep turning the ruler around. If you wanna come on this angle over here, maybe you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna line it up with the last one I just quilted. And I'm gonna go out and back. I stop, I hit the stop button and I rotate it and I'm lining up the line where I just quilted, keeping this to my sure foot. Out and back in. Hit the stop button. Rotate it. Line up that last line. In and back. I go around, I keep rotating. That one, I already have the line, so I'm gonna rotate it one more and line up the last line, keeping it secure there. Out and back in. You notice I wasn't on the straight line because this is awkward for me to hold my hand that way. So I could have come around this way and turned my hand. So I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna move the catching raise ruler this way. I'm gonna have you come back on the other side and I'm gonna reposition my hand because this feels more comfortable for me. And I go out and back in, stopping at that same hole. So when you use the rulers, you'll know what's comfortable and what's not comfortable. All right, then back out and back in. Okay, then I'm just rotating all the way around that line's already been done. So I'm gonna go all the way and line up that ruler there. Out and back. Keep rotating around. Rotate again. I like this ruler because it's very simple. You're just rotating all the way around. Okay. 
lining up the last line that you just quilted. And then keep rotating. We're on our last petal here. Last one on this one. When I'm finished, I put needle up. I'm gonna yank my thread. I'm gonna move the machine away. I'm gonna pick up the bottom, the bottom thread. Go back, needle down, needle up, and then I'm gonna clip all three threads. And that's how I do my tie off. Now, you can look at this block and you can see that it has quite a bit of thread build up because I kept coming back to that same spot, up and back to that same spot. So, which is fine because that's what was on the handout. But let's try a different block and I'm gonna show you a different way that I can do it. If I didn't wanna come back to the center, I could just take each spoke of the wheel, needle down, needle up, bring my bobbin thread to the top, do a few locking stitches. And this time I'm not gonna come in the center. This time I'm just gonna do each spoke and I'm gonna do three times around. So I'll go up. And then I'm going to, I'd like to get those threads out of the way. And then I'm gonna come back down. And then I'm gonna rotate on that line, on the ruler, up and back. Now, I can go all the way back around this way to come all the way around, that's how the ruler works. Or I could turn the ruler over and come in this direction because I always have to line up that line with the last one that I quilted. That's what keeps the angles consistently the same all the way around. So I could flip it over, line it up, and go out and back. And you notice on my ruler, I have um, the stickies on the back so that it gives more grip. And what I'm gonna do here, on this one here, instead of going through the center, I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm going to go back to the next spoke, to the center, line it up, and up and back, turn it, up and back. Now I can go all the way around or I can just flip it back line that line up and go up for a different look. That way there's nothing built up inside this hexagon. And then I can have each of the spokes quilted using the catching ray ruler. So I hope you can find some designs to use this like a spider web or straight line. Always keep the packet on the back so you have some ideas of how you want to use your catching rays rulers. If you like this video, like my YouTube page, Martha Higdon. Check out my um, Facebook page, Around the Vine Quilting. Look for more videos. Happy quilting.